What's up, Doc? I hope you're ready for a new round of Radical Retro Turtle Toy Talk, because here it comes. It's the final day of January, and in the West, January is the beginning of a new year. However, later this week on February 3rd, the Chinese New Year will be celebrated. Of the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac, 2011 is the year of the hare. So combining that with this week marking the end of the West's first month of the year and the start of the first month of the Chinese calendar, leads me to ask what better time to bring up the Bushido abiding battling bunny Miyamoto Usagi, or Usagi Yojimbo. For the sake of clarity, I suppose the first thing to address is Usagi's name. Usagi Yojimbo, which translates from Japanese to Rabbit Bodyguard, is actually the title of the comic that the character whose name is Miyamoto Usagi comes from. The comic is a creation of Stan Sakai, and was actually the first character not created by Mirage to get a figure in the first Turtle toy line. However, he is incorrectly named Usagi Yojimbo, both in the first animated series and on his figure file cards. Stan Sakai's comic series is an expansive universe on its own and has featured a number of crossovers with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over the years. In 1989, via Don's transportation portal, Usagi found himself flung from feudal Japan of an anthropomorphic animal-based alternate reality into the turtle's modern-day Earth. Usagi is just that, a rabbit. Specifically, a samurai rabbit, with long white ears tied as if they were hair in a ponytail. His face is way more intimidating than most rabbits you'll come across, complete with a fearsome forehead scar. Usagi wears what I believe to be tatami do chest armor, which is blue in color and coordinates with his removable shoulder armor pieces known as sode, and his removable thigh armor pieces, which are similar to and serve the same purpose as the leg armor known as haidate. On the seat of his dark Byzantium baggy pants, you can see the name Stan Sakai, as opposed to Eastman and Laird or Mirage Studios. Around his waist is a black obi, and on his feet is a pair of matching seta. Now I'm no martial artist, nor do I speak Japanese, so if I screwed up the names or pronunciations of any of the armor pieces, I'm sure someone will correct me, and I apologize if I've offended. Usagi has the usual seven points of articulation, featuring ball-jointed hips and swiveling shoulders, elbows, and neck. He is a well-balanced figure who is not top-heavy at all, and while one of his feet is dynamic, his seta both lie flat, so standing him up is a piece of carrot cake. Usagi is a figure who comes with more realistic weapons. He's got his curved spear called a naginata. His long sword, or katana. His short sword, called a wakizashi. His dagger, known as a tanto. And the same fist dagger that many of the first TMNT figures came with. While you may have to work at some of the poses, getting him to at least hold the weapons is usually not much trouble at all. Usagi actually did get a second figure in the first Playmates line in Space Usagi. Space Usagi was actually not just any gimmick figure, though. Stan Sakai actually did a few spin-off miniseries called Space Usagi, which featured a descendant of Miyamoto Usagi in the distant future. Not only that, but there was even a pilot for a Space Usagi animated series. But due to the total tanking of Bucky O'Hare toys, no companies were willing to take another chance on a space-hopping bunny. Other than being a white rabbit, the Space Usagi figure looks nothing like his comic counterpart, but does share a lot of similarities with the original Playmates figure. 
His facial expression and manner in which his ears are tied are almost the exact same way as before. He even has the same scar. A major difference though is the color and texture of the shushu holding back his ears. Oh, and I suppose there's the unexplained black faceplate with cybernetic red eye, but why get hung up on minor details? Space Usagi's blue and purple color scheme is roughly the same as the first Usagi, with the addition of gold detailing and chartreuse armor and seta. His armor pieces are no longer the same color as before or removable, but each piece is still in the same place on his body. One major difference is the addition of a pair of blue plastic shoulder guards and a removable cloth cosmic cape, which attaches and detaches via an elastic band around his neck. While the two shades of blue differ a bit, you can put the cape on the original Usagi if you so desire, and it actually looks kinda cool. Part of what makes Space Usagi really cool to me is not only is his articulation all the same as the first Usagi, but their entire stance and posture are nearly identical. The flat Space Age Seta still makes standing a snap, and because of the same arm positioning, Space Usagi can wield the weapons of the previous Usagi. While he can bear the blades of his predecessor, Space Usagi comes with galactic grappling gear of his own. The Celery Silencer looks like a pretty high-tech laser blaster type weapon, and is pretty nicely detailed for the single colored piece of plastic that it is. Unlike the Celery Silencer, the Cosmic Carrot Cannon actually resembles the vegetable of its namesake. The hair helmet is actually two pieces of clear plastic that snap around Space Usagi's head to form a space helmet, with a hole up top for his ears. When TMNT made its return to TV in 2003, Usagi also came along for the ride, both on the screen and in action figure form. While all of Usagi's figures from Playmates have been incorrectly named, in the 2003 cartoon, they at least got his name right when he introduced himself to Leonardo as Miyamoto Usagi during the Big Brawl story arc. He turns out to actually have at one time helped rescue Splinter from an attack by Shadow Assassins, which is coincidentally the same way he met Leonardo. Usagi's 2004 figure much more closely resembles the original Stan Sakai comic. The look on his face is really more focused and determined as opposed to the angrier look on the vintage figure, but still has the famous scar over his left eye and his ears tied in a ponytail. Like we've seen from most of the second line figures when compared to the first, Usagi is not as brightly colored as before. His clothing consists of an indigo kimono with gray highlights, black pants, and a pair of brown seta. 2004 Usagi has 8 mobility points. He moves at each hip, each shoulder, each elbow, his neck, and most noteworthy, his waist, which is actually an action feature. You swivel his waist clockwise until you get a click. Then, after placing weapons in his hands, press the button about where his cotton tail would be and watch him swing counterclockwise, attacking with his swords. Oftentimes in the first line, a dynamic foot could cause problems with standing. This Usagi doesn't have any standing issues, but his entire pose is dynamic, permanently in a defensive crouch position, with arms spread all the way out. 2004 Usagi comes with four swords, two long ones and two short ones. If you're just posing him on your shelf, you can put two of his swords in his removable sheaths on his removable Heko Obi, and two in his hands. However, when the swords are in his sheaths, they hinder his spinning waist attack, stopping him in mid-spin. This is actually fine if you want him posed facing completely forward, but just to warn you, the swords are a pretty soft plastic, which will warp pretty easily as he presses against the hilts. 
There have been other Usagi figures from other companies, but as this is Radical Retro Turtle Toy Talk, I'm only covering Usagi as he relates to TMNT. Now that you've seen all three, who do you like best? Are you a bigger fan of the brighter, goofier 80s Usagi figures? Do you prefer the more comic-accurate style of the 2004 version? Or are blade-swinging bunnies just boring? However you feel, I'd love to hear it. Hop over to www.radicalretro.com, join the forums, and holler on the heroic hair. Radical Retro Turtle Toy Talk is a part of the Pop Culture Network, which is the number one place to go for lots of video, audio, and written series covering everything you love, like toys, comics, TV and film, wrestling, and plenty more. While you're there, be sure to take a trip to the totally tubular Pop Culture Network store. There's tons of awesome inventory up for sale there that you know you've just got to get. And if you like what's happening here at Pop Culture Network, shopping at the store is the absolute best way to support us. Hope you'll hop back down the bunny trail in a week for another round of Radical Retro Turtle Toy Talk. Until then, stay rad.